Hey there, everybody. Welcome into the studios. Kieran, Craig, Casey, and Seb with you for this edition of Extra Time. Natum's interior decorator fires off our first question. Would you guys rather be in a position similar to PSG, where your league title is pretty much wrapped up by now and only have Champions League games to get up for, or be in a team where you're in two competitions, including the league, where every game has a feel of a must win? I'm not going to answer that question. Okay, Casey? I'll tell you why. Oh. Okay. Because I had a very similar question. Mm -hmm. Might have been from the same person, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Natum's interior decorator is a frequent contributor to Extra Correct. Time. Correct. The last time I was on the show, mm -hmm. I had the very same question. There's not enough attention to detail here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not that that would surprise you. No. <laughs> Just saying. No, for, for, for the sake of repeating myself, I, I shall allow. That's other Craig people. Burley calling out production. I, I personally think. I'm not, I think you want to be. There needs to be an edge. So I you think, would prefer I, to be I, in a title. I think. Chase. I think you got to be it. in a. Maybe not like a. A hundred percent title chase, where, right. where like we're seeing in the Premier League right now, but where, where you, you can't give Rodri a break. Correct. Where you still have to make sure you don't get sucked in. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kieran, what do you say? You agree with Casey? I agree with Casey. I was literally about to say the same thing. Yeah. Do you agree with me? <laughs> Not today. I, I never Not agree today. with you, Berlin. <laughs> I don't know what I've said. I you mean, agree with me? do you agree with me? I'm not, what, what? It's it's a strange island over there. It's you and Gab, and who else was agreeing with you? Hold on. Gab was agreeing with you on the penalty thing. No, I thought Gab thought it was a certain penalty. No, no, he didn't. No, 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 no. Uh, Gab was with Craig. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, they're usually at odds. Gab's not a rule. I have to say, the bulky people, I think, and there was somebody else on the show that... Jan was very yeah. in their camp. Who else was on with me? I can't remember. It wasn't Stevie. You, Stevie, yeah. was, Stevie was in Jan's camp. Stevie wasn't on on Wednesday when I was on. It was somebody else. Who was it? I don't know. No, actually, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Kieran, percentage chance Arsenal win Premier League or Champions League. So, either one of the two, percentage chance. Fifty percent. Ooh. For which? No, for either. Can, uh, yeah, either, but can you give a, Can you give a? a I, which Which do you think is a greater I would, percentage? I would say. Is I would it, say. It, I would say forty. Uh, Forty-five percent. Prem. Five percent. Champions League. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Sorry. What was that? You significantly said, better up chance of winning the Premier League than winning the Champions League. Yeah, 40, you went 45% Champions League, right? Right. Yeah. And what was it? No, no, no. Okay, well, give no, it to us again. 45% Premier League. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So a more, better chance of winning the Champions League? No, only 5% of winning the Champions League. Oh, wow, okay. I had somebody yeah. in my ear. I didn't yeah. hear those numbers. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's because you Five have, like you said, the... The Real Madrids and the Bayern Munichs. And yeah, but I mean, Real Madrid and City, one of them's gone. 20%. Well, well yeah. But I mean, you don't hate still, Arsenal's... I'm not doing percentages. Okay. <laughs> Don's not. I'd give more than 5% <laughs> Don, for the Champions League. We only, should, we only ever should do percentages in this show. I think Don's you're right. On. I think you're right. It's just for, so we can use the art of ridicule. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I'm not going to butter it up yeah. any other way and say, oh, I love percentages. I don't know who gives a stuff. Nobody cares. But Don's on, it's very exciting. Just to see, like, the wrinkles in his head as he kind of really... As he's sweat, gonna be, the beads. You, if you peeled it back a little bit, if you, somehow you could peel it back and see See the, the brain. hamster on the wheel. <laughs> What's happening in there? Yeah. Um, all right, we, uh, let's not take shots of people that aren't here. Uh, Craig, who had the better finish? Why not? Oh, he's not here to defend himself. And, I, and we love Don. Don's good people. Who had the better finish, Valverde against City or Rafinha against PSG? Which, which finish was Rafinha better? Rafinha against... Rafinha against PSG. The over-the-top left-footed. Yeah, footed. Oh, yeah, I'm with you. Um, the the one-time strike. Yeah, it was, oh, it was clean. Oh, it was yeah. even better for me than Phil Foden. Oh, okay. You you, you say the same about Verde? It's a good Is goal. the better yeah. of the two? Kieran? And, and, and the timing of it, too. Yes. Yeah. Kieran, well, three for three. three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Amazing. He's got somewhere to go, hasn't he? One more dancer. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's in Miami, so he's got more places to go than uh, than we do. Hey. Yeah. How do you know? How do you know? I know you're. How do you know Casey Keller and me? Well, I know Casey. Is it, is it, is I that, know Casey's plans later today. They're dinner that, with me. Is that something? So I know he's we, not in a rush to get to are that. Are we dealing in ages? Do you want to tell us about your plans later today? <laughs> no, why would I tell you? Okay, about my that's plans? what I thought. My, it's clandestine. You didn't, get, you didn't invite him to dinner with us? He can always come to dinner yeah, with us. Yeah, hey, we, but, but, come yeah. on, get you out of the house. One word. 
responsibilities. <laughs> right. I have those right. yeah. and bucket loads. Oh man, you're gonna you're gonna play that card for a while. I feel like Kieran's fake plants. Uh, speaking of Kieran, is our next cheap plants. Next uh, <laughs> submission here. What did Kieran and Casey think of Saka's penalty shout against Neuer? Okay, uh, Casey. Uh, you go first. I honestly thought it was a penalty. I mean, when I when I first saw it, and then what I was what I was expecting to see on the replay when I knew that it wasn't called was you know a situation where Neuer comes out, kind of stands, <sighs> and then Saka runs into him. And I know there was a little bit of that, but I was I thought it was much closer than. Uh, than I thought I was going to see on replay. So I was a little surprised that it was, I was very surprised it wasn't called. Kieran, agree or disagree with Casey? I do, but the only the only thing that makes me um, think otherwise is he was just in such a good position if, if, he, uh, if he manages to skip past him to just put it in the back of the net. So it's one of them, like, and I think Saka's, you know, he's, he's an honest player for the most part. You know, he's not one of them players that, Kind of does those things, so you've got to take that into account as well. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I, I thought it was a pen. I think you thought it was a pen. Yeah. I tell you, you two are pretty much on an island. There's not a lot of people at all mm. thought that was a pen. Sa what, what, what was it about it that told you that it? Because Saka was running directly across the box, and he threw his leg out and kicked Neuer. He threw he. Initiated the contact. Yeah, that's, I, thought I thought that was, that was crystal clear in the I replay. I, for me, I, anyway. I, I need to see it a couple more times. But when I first, I didn't. I was expecting it to be clearer than it than it was that I saw. Uh, let's talk Real Madrid and Manchester City. Kyle Walker and Militao likely to return in the second leg. Which team will be more relieved? Uh, which of those two is a bigger add for the second leg? Walker. Yeah. Yeah, and I tell you why, because. Uh, uh, Real Madrid have coped admirably without a lot of players, particularly defensively yeah, goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, they've had too many playing centre half. They've had uh, Carvajal playing centre half, Camavinga playing left back, all these sort of things. And Militao is a great player. But one thing that's going to be big at the Etihad is the counter attacking football from Real Madrid, particularly away from home. I mean, they were counter attacking at home. So if you think it was a juicy event, at the Bernabeu is going to be even more cat and mouse at the Etihad because this city defence this season have been a little vulnerable. Yeah, they haven't been as stable. Or, 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 or a lot vulnerable and fragile at times against much weaker opposition. So you think about it, Rodrigo, Valverde, Vinicius Jr., how dangerous Bellingham on these late runs, how dangerous this team are going to be in the counter-attack, what do I need? Some coverings. One of the Some quickest covering. defenders yeah. still for sure. in world football, and that's Kyle Walker. So for me, uh, Walker would be the huge plus to the way this game is going to ebb and flow. Can't wait. Should be a great uh, second leg. Don't Hutchison for oh, Casey. Don't. Don't Hutchison. <laughs> Who had the worst week in goal? Donnarumma, Kelleher, or Lunin? Well, it wasn't... It, it, wasn't great goalkeeping um, across oh, the I'd board. I'd hurt you to say that. I know, <laughs> it, it, it was. Um, uh, I thought the first goal from Kelleher and the first goal from Lunin were the two worst of the... The Lunin goal feels like... The free uh, kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the Christensen goal? I don't know if you remember yeah, it. He, so, he, yeah. Could he have came off? Yes. Because yes. he's headed it from four or five Yeah, yards. it could have. You... Or is that just a classic case of us outfield players saying, why did the goalie not come for that? Well, no, I mean, I think I think you look at you look at goals by an aspect of how should I have saved that? Could I have saved that? And Kelleher on the first goal should have saved it. Lunin on the first goal should have saved it. I think in the other case, yes, he could have come for that. Yes, he could have maybe done something different. But the, the clear should-haves were the first goal for yeah. Lunin and I suppose there was one incident in the, in the Barcelona game with Donnarumma, and the first half came out a bit hesitant, and Lewandowski beat him to it. It was a header. And on the follow is the and goal. And the follow, maybe he's in his mind. Well, one thing I would say, and the, the right, those other mistakes were more apparent, but those two guys are basically backup goalkeepers, right. although Lunin That's is right. the number one now. Yeah. Uh, whereas Donnarumma right. is seen as I don't know. number one and Carragher, one of the best in the world. Carragher was very critical of Donnarumma on the goal where 
He tried to play like a 30, 40 yard ball out and then off of that turnover, there was a couple passes and the, and, and the, and the goal. And now I, I would say that there's five, six goalkeepers in the world that are very, very good with their feet who will play that ball under pressure over two defenders diagonally into a space. And he's and, not one of them. And if he's not one of them, that's okay. But in a situation, in a match of that magnitude, you as the goalkeeper have to recognize what are my strengths and weaknesses. If that's not my strength, I'm gonna clear my lines, I'm gonna keep the ball at the back of the net. And in a, in a in a situation in the league against a lesser opposition, maybe I try to play that ball, but in that, if that's not my strength, don't play it. Isn't it amazing as pundits, analysts over the years, we always manage to swing it all the way back around to the goalies. Yeah. Always, yeah. for sure. It's always like when you're doing yeah. it, you go, you're analyzing the back four or yeah. that line. But, but because, because you know what I was laughing about that? Jamie Carragher was never in a million years going to play that ball as a, as a defender. That wasn't his strength. His strength was one-on-one -on -one defending where he would shut down a defender. He wasn't playing a 30-yard ball across the across the penalty spot to try to pick out a guy on the channel. Ever. Now they're asking goalies to do it on the regular. Well, and they're supposed to then keep the ball at the back of the net as well. So, okay. That's a wage rise, isn't it, really? To be honest, isn't it? it's a treble the wages. You're asking me to. You ask him exactly. to be the best player with his feet and yeah. the best player with his hands. Okay. Last one here. Guys, who were your soccer role models as a youth player? Who did you look up to and perhaps model your playing style after? Uh, Kieran, why don't you lead us off? Football role models. <laughs> mm, I used to love Michael Owen. I used to love Michael Owen, and then I used to love the old Ronaldo. Um, and then what was the other bit? Well, who did you model your game after? Mm. So who was the guy that you <laughs> looked Because that you said, okay, there's the there's the guy that I want to say that he's playing the way. Plus, I it's got to be maybe like your position to too, yeah, right? Yeah, it has to yeah. be pretty position specific. As a as a youngster, I was I was more of a midfielder before I, before I turned kind of 17 when I made my debut. So in the team that time, I used to love Freddie Jumberg, who was playing. Um, I used to love Hleb. Um, Perez? I Robert Perez. Yeah. Um, those those kind of wide players and 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 midfielders as well, to be honest. Um, when did you get to yeah, Arsenal? We, you were were you there? In, were you in the academy for the Invincibles here? Two thousand four, I joined. So yeah, so you were there, or did you come in in the fall? Kind of like just just after, yeah, just after. Yeah, just, yeah the summer. But, after but sorry, as a, as a, as I was fourteen at the time. That time. You get some. So I, was, you, I came you in get, as an academy player. You get some sort of love affair with the Invincibles today, or something. Yeah. I mean, what is it? There's something I. There's well, he something. was naming <laughs> players from that era, and I was just, I was trying to. I didn't know exactly his when he got to the club. We had, we so, had like an elongated, yeah. all right, segment on the show where you basically blubbered over the Invincibles. Who, who was your Scottish <laughs> midfield role I model? This will not surprise you. I didn't really have any role models. Yeah, no spirit of the game for Craig, okay? But I did say, no, no, because I'm not really like that. But growing up, one place I used to go, and this is, people would have to look this up if they did. Indeed, if they were bothered, which if it was me, I wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to go to Ipswich. I like to yeah. preempt. Yeah. Why would you? It's like leaving right. comments in the totally. YouTube segment yeah. below. Yeah, you've got to be really sad, haven't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you get some sort of life if you're leaving comments. And, uh, anyway. <laughs> totally they, derailed the story. <laughs> oh, what will I do today? <laughs> I think I'll go on YouTube and leave some comments. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Help me. Help. People, Help! Watching this, people watching this on YouTube. Yeah. Leave a comment. Leave a comment. Yeah, do what you yeah. want. Leave a comment. Take that time out of your life. Uh, you You'll never get it back. Who you looked up to? I used to look at Ipswich when mm -hmm. Sir Bobby Robson uh, was the great manager of this small club who had all these great players, mm -hmm. including the late, great Palmer, uh, friend, yes. Paul Mariner. Legend. Who was a, an super guy. amazing, yeah, super guy, amazing player for England, for Ipswich, for Arsenal and others. <clears throat> but part of that team, and people won't realise, it's one of the best teams in England. With Alan Brazell and Mariner and you know, Terry Butcher, and oh, it, it's, it's unbelievable. But two of the guys I used to look at in midfield were two Dutch guys. 
-hmm. One went on to Man United, Arnold Muren. And the other one was a Dutch guy called Franz Tyson. People won't remember him, but they were. And anybody that watches and remembers that era and watched that Ipswich team of the late, of the early 80s, uh, they won the UEFA Cup, they, they were almost won the English top league title. They were amazing. I met them when I was a young, I met them when I was a youngster. They went to play, Ipswich went to play Rangers in the testimonial. My uncle George was playing for Ipswich at the time, George Burley. And uh, Franz Tyson was there. And I was about 12 or 13, so I was a little bit in awe. And he gave me like this Ipswich tie and stuff. I was a little bit in awe back then, you know. Can you imagine? And I've turned in. Yeah. And now, awestruck. <laughs> now I've turned into some miserable, grump, grumpy. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said it. Yeah. For me, it was difficult because you. Know, I was going to say in the states. It was like, tough to to find, um, you know, kind of a, a enough of from the sport, but of the of the people I knew, of kind of the NASL guys that came over, of the different things. Um, Probably two guys that I that I tried to to get videos of and different things were were Peter Shilton and Pat Jennings. Mm. And uh, uh, did you have you ever met Pat Jennings? Of course, Pat right. actually. So I'm I, I just presuming so, you had. He's yeah, got so, the biggest so, hands and in Schiltz, the and Schiltz and Schiltz too. Pat so, got the biggest not, hands not in the world. Really? Oh, I thought he had. He, yeah. yeah, no, but they, but I think for his all size, goalies. Look at yeah, him. we all have kind of big hands, but but he had big hands. Yes, but he he's also he's a he lovely also, guy. Yeah. Oh, great. So Gentleman. I met I met. You know, Schultz different times at Millwall, but then obviously when I played for Leicester and he would always kind of come back to Leicester being a, a Leicester person. Um, but Big Pat would come in once a week and still help with the goalkeepers at Spurs when I was there. So got to know uh, Big Pat really well. And, and, and yeah, so it was kind of cool to go first, full circle as this American kid trying to get videos where people said, hey, you should watch this guy play. and watch the way he does this kind of stuff and watch these videos as a kid and then get to know both of them pretty well. Were there any American players or like stars in that NASL that you would have? No. Like there was nobody, right? Well, I mean, there was, but they, 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 like, I mean, I mean, good guy, you know, like the Shep Messings and the guys like yeah. that. But, but you, but when you then were, you know, you, the, the idea was to be respected you know, at that other level. And those were the guys that were the, the benchmark in those 70s and 80s when I was a kid. This is getting very nostalgic. I know, I know. And spirit that's, of the game. And that's when, what you love. That's what, <laughs> You don't want us to follow the rules. You want us to follow the spirit of the game. I never mentioned spirit of the game. Spirit <laughs> of the game. That's not the rules. That's, when you get nostalgic, that's when the mask drops. And that's not a good thing. The mask drops. Yeah. You, you, persona. <laughs> and then we just... Sounds like a good time for me to wrap it up. Uh, I think that should do it for this edition of Extra Time. Our thanks to Kieran, Craig, and Casey, and our thanks to you guys as well for sending in some great questions. Yep. Go on YouTube, leave a comment. Yes, please. That, uh, that always helps.